And that's it, Dobby. That was the little elf in Huta who was lost in New York. Now, time for bed. Oh, c come on! I can't fall asleep after that! That pigeon lady, I can't get her out of my head! You ever been attacked by pigeons? Uh... It's a horrible experience! It's almost as bad as a 38 in the back of your head! Okay, okay. <laughs> Let me see. Ah. This one is about Sinterklaas. Oh, my favorite! Who kills people? That's definitely not my favorite! Well, this is the only story I'm going to tell. Is he played by Mr. Haggerty? No. Tim Allen? No. Mickey Rooney? No. Okay, just tell me. Okay. This story is by David Hess. Like the trucks? No. Dobby. Have you been a good Elfa Huta all year? I'm not telling you, Opa! Sinter Klaus knows. He always knows. Hey, what's up? And welcome to Movie Dumpster Season 5, Episode 21. Today we're talking about To All a Good Night from 1980, directed by David Hess. I'm Joel Escola. And I'm Sean O'Rourke. Welcome to the dumpster. Well, it's our second holiday film it, uh, dropping after the holiday, but it's here. It's it, here. It's okay. <laughs> this is our last episode of 2022, hey, Sean. Of season five, Joe. Holy shit. Uh, kind of crazy. Uh, you know, 21 episodes, but we did do uh, a lot more. We did a lot of talks from the dark side. We did. Uh, a handful of ripe reviews. And minis. Minis. Uh, we did a handful of minis and yeah. the commentary tracks, so... Yeah. We did a lot this year. Well, when you think of all of that, on top of like and, and our live, live, show. live shows, yeah, yeah. Uh, live watch alongs, all that kind of shit. So it kind of it, it starts to add up real yes. quick. But man, we'll get into that on our on our year end wrap up. Yes. Yes. But it has been a wild ride for 2022. Uh, and we're closing it out with a uh, Christmas slasher film that kind of predates a lot of other slasher movies. It, it sure does, especially in this particular subgenre. Yes, at, well, absolutely. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, to all a good night. Uh, the the only feature length directorial film, uh, or directorial effort rather, of David Hess. Yeah. Uh, what what else was this guy kind of known for? So David Hess is famously known for uh, playing Krug in uh, Wes Craven's Last House on the Left. Oh, yeah, I think you had told me that previously. Your pants. Yeah, yeah. He also scored that movie too. So oh. he's a, he's a composer, director, writer. Um, yeah. Did and he do it all for this movie? Uh, no, he did it. Yeah. So so like the music, I guess. Like I don't love it in this movie, but it's not like my favorite circus music or anything like that. <laughs> Uh, it's kind of like, you know, your classic, you know, slasher kind of generic kind of plotting music. It's it's fine. I think it kind of gets a little grating towards the end, but it's it's pretty good. I'm into it. I, I really like the the synth score here. There, it, It's yeah. accredited to two people and it, neither of them says composer. It says one's arranged and one's something else. So I guess it's both of them. But anyway, there's just that just one beat that just kind of gets a little too repetitive. But I feel like that's them. Well, David Hess or whoever composed this, like you just said, uh, chasing the genre oh, no, he a did, little. But he didn't. Well, right. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. But he is the uh, composer. Yeah. Um. um but uh, the uh, I don't know. I really I really dig the score in this. I mean, it kicks right up right out of the gate of this. No. Yeah. Um. And, and it's 1980. So like, I feel like if you don't do any research on this or if you don't know your years, you could very easily fall into the trap of thinking this is a Friday the Thirteenth ripoff. Well, I'll get to, we'll get to that. You want to hold off on that let's thought? Hold, let's hold hold off on okay, that thought. Okay. That's more like a final thought kind All of right. thing. I say that specifically for later because I I want to go through the beats of this. Okay, well then I guess hold on to that little morsel <laughs> for a little it, while. Put it, put it put it right in your advent calendar right there. Yeah. Just don't pull that little mouse out of the out of the hole yet. Oh, right, you, you're saving that Christmas tree. Christmas yes. already may be yes. passed, but in the MDO, <laughs> it's right here. It's yes. it's ever present. Yes. Before we get to like all of that kind of stuff and like the history of this film in particular, I did I just wanted to mention David Hess again because oh, yeah. um he's so great. Um, as Krug in Last House on the Left, but he's also um, in a film called House on the Edge of the Park, which is awesome. Um, it's really good. He plays a similar character to Last oh, House God. on the Left, but so it's a big slime ball. Oh man, it is like 
I I, I want to, in my opinion, it's kind of like uh, if you mixed Last House on the Left with Funny Games, where uh, okay. it's like it, you know, this fucking serial killer rapist like is inadvertently because he's a mechanic, so he inadvertently okay. gets invited to like this like uh, uh, bougie fucking party of these rich people, and he ends up like raping people and like doing all this fucked up shit to these people in this house. It's intense, is, man. Is he like the metal fetishist from fucking Tetsuo? He like builds this machine around himself with this drill fucking dick he, and everything. Yeah, man, he's a fucking sadist. It's a great flick, man. We should we should cover that at some point, whether, whether it's on Patreon or, or mainline. Okay, okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll keep that in the back of my head. This that that wonderful nugget. I'll I'll, I'll think about it. It's a fucking uh, Ruggiero uh, Diodato joint, man. Okay. Okay. So like you're saying, there's also another film that came out in 1980. <laughs> four by, months later. Four months later by the name of Friday the 13th. Now, I don't want to go too much into the relationship between the plot of that yet. Sure, sure. But this is the first slasher of the 80s. That's crazy to think about. Yeah, January 30th it dropped. The first one to come out. Which like they couldn't quite make that Christmas uh, release day. I guess just something in the editing room had to be fixed or something. Sure, but not a lot of people talk about this one because um, it is. I, I like this movie, but uh, this does not usually come up in the. It's it's lower on the list because there's so many other ones that are worth watching more. Like like Silent Night Deadly Night. Straight up. Uh, well, well, elves, of course, obviously. Well, I mean, it's particularly Killer Santa movies. Well, I was just going to, you know, lean right into a Patreon <laughs> plug with that, Joe. <laughs> okay. Uh, Patreon.com slash movie dumpster. Yes, we have commentary tracks mm. again. They're they're back. Elves is uh, the one I'm referring to. But we also just did a Creepshow 2 commentary yeah. track. Kind of a back-to-back -back this month. Yeah, we did Creepshow 2 uh, with Chris Barr from yes. Tape Hell. That was like to piggyback off the Creepshow episode we did. And yes. then uh, we did Elves. We had to bring Elves back into the fold. Back into the Christmas uh, <laughs> fold. <laughs> Especially for that... Uh, 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 book and the wraparound. Yeah, the wraparound will. story for uh, this year. Yeah, with Dobby and Grandpa Van Damme. The of trashing course. through the snow. Uh, through line. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, just for anyone unfamiliar. So go to Patreon to check that out if yeah. you haven't seen Elves with Dan Haggerty. Yeah. Uh, uh, Haggerty the Blue himself. It's it's a gem. It's a gem of a film. Ah, uh, yeah. So what were we actually talking about for that uh, yeah. insert? <laughs> we were talking about the fact that this is not. The first movie to feature a killer Santa Claus. Oh, right, yeah. But yeah. it is the, so. Nineteen seventy two Tales from the Crypt, which had the an all through the house segment. Okay. The first time that that was put to film before the Larry Drake starring one that they did uh, for the Tales from the Crypt TV show on okay. HBO. Okay. But um, um, the seventy two Tales from the Crypt had an all through the house, and that was the first portrayal, I believe, in horror of a like a killer Santa Claus on film. Hmm. This is the second one. It's um, kind of crazy. Yeah. It's also not the first, uh, clearly not the first uh, Christmas horror movie because we have 74's Bob Clark classic, Black Christmas. Well, right. But even before that is Silent Night, Bloody Night. Okay. Which I have never seen, but I'm familiar with. David Carradine's in it, and so is Mary Warrenov. Okay. Uh, it's actually sitting on the shelf right over there. Uh, I debated throwing it into the loop a couple times, but now that we've now that we're covering to go all a good night, I think it would be a nice bookend segment to do Silent Night Bloody Night because like, we've like already future, yeah because yeah, we've already done Black Christmas, we're doing to all the good night now yeah. and I think that would be a nice cap off to talk about the you know the transition between like the 70s to the mm -hmm. 80s and how we go forward from this to Silent Night Deadly Night. Right, you know? right. I that, and Christmas horror in general. Uh, sure, I, I sure, like especially it. like now, this year in particular, like there's a few Christmas horror movies out. Like Violent Nights out. Uh, yeah, I really want to see that. I may have seen it by the time this video comes out because yeah. it looks fucking awesome. I love David Harbour. And yeah. he's like beating the shit out of like <laughs> Scrooge, uh, 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 John Leguizamo, which yeah, is yeah, just funny yeah. to me. And like Leguizamo just leaning into that shit hard too. I'm definitely not going to get a chance to go see it in the theater. Yeah, but I, I think I, I'm going to try. I'm going to try. It should be VOD like. This weekend, uh, yeah, the there, Christmas weekend. Yeah. So this is after Christmas. There's another one that that's out right now. That's like a kind of like uh, another a killer Santa movie. I forget the name of it. Uh, there's a few out. Oh, bloody bloody night or something like that. Bloody Christmas, bloody or some Christmas, shit. some shit. There's like it's like a robot fucking Terminator Santa or some uh, shit. Yeah, like Futurama or something. And then there's like that Grinch one. Oh, the mean that, one. That's supposedly horrible. Well, it's crazy how much Christmas stuff there is coming out there's a bunch of indie projects too um uh, my buddy pj stark has a uh christmas movie coming out called 13 slays till christmas or xmas excuse me oh my god so that no, name but like it's i feel like 
this is like the jumping off point. Mm. You know, like we got Christmas horror in the seventies, but it was a few and far between, and then the eighties just exploded. Oh yeah, yeah, with yeah. with all of it. Um, and then going into the nineties, of course, the Silent Night Deadly Night series, all of that shit, and like uh, you know, elves and you know, all kinds of stuff like that. Well, uh, Jack Frost. Oh yeah. You know, there's a lot of shit. Um, I also feel like you know, and I don't want to go off on like a side tangent about this, but it, I feel like it's worth at least mentioning. Specifically, with like the Killer Santa stuff, and we've we've covered other Killer Santa movies. Like, yeah. what was the one we did last year? Um, Don't open till Christmas. Yeah, or Xmas. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's a that's great a, one. That's another. Well, yeah. Hmm, yeah. in your opinion, I think it's great. I think it's not very good, <laughs> but okay. It's a dry British horror movie. It's not quite snowman poop, but it's not uh, very <laughs> good. Uh, but my point is, like, I feel like Christmas, whereas like compared to like a Halloween, for example, like yeah. Halloween, you kind of expect like spooks and and uh, ghouls to come out, like. You get that like kind of thing where people are like, "Oh, oh, Santa! You can't make Santa evil. That's against children." So I feel like there's like more of a stigma against it. Uh, yeah, I think there was Le- less so now. Sure. I mean, but... that was the the first Silent Night Deadly Night. That was like their whole fucking campaign. Oh dude. yeah, dude, yeah. <laughs> you know I, yeah I mean? Even Santa Slay Man with yeah. Goldberg as oh, silly Santa, as the yeah, movie that, is. That too, yeah. But the only other question I guess I really have then on that note is like, is this movie like available on DVD or Blu-ray? So Scorpion releasing put this out in 2014. On Blu-ray, it's out of print now. Okay. I think it's like seventy dollars if you want it. Um, I also want to say that ah, maybe nobody else put it out. Hmm. I'm not sure. I want to say Vinegar Syndrome did, but they didn't. They just put out uh, "Don't Open Till Christmas" okay. on like a beautiful okay. like uh, restoration, they, which we didn't even get to see. We only watched the VHS. Cut, well, that and is I think true. that's why. What much like this, if you watch the VHS version of this, the cleaned up Blu-ray is a v- much better experience. No, sure, but yeah. I feel like there's like maybe one or two shots in this movie where I'm like, all right, it's a little too dark, but I'm kind of giving it the benefit of the doubt because it is a very low budget movie. I mean, I thought Scorpion did a, did a nice job. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, just just wondering because like this definitely, if that's not a thing, it deserves to be a thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I know we talk about that a lot, like you just said on this show. Like I always go back to like a movie like The Kindred comes to mind, or even like from this year, Sinjinor, uh, or, just, or uh, Scared uh, to Death specifically. I, I want to put a pin in that because we will be revisiting Kindred next year. We talked about doing it, and we didn't watch the Synapse Blu-ray or any of that stuff. So right. we're gonna do that. Oh my that. god, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but just thinking about like how this film deserves to be seen by more people because sure. it's uh, it's something special. And like you make the point that it's the first or second of its kind, and it's like yeah, I don't really hear that many people talking about. It. Like occasionally, I see like people that we know like bring it up but very rarely have i yeah. heard this one brought up in conversation i mean of course the circles that i'm in that that's another thing like when i say that like not a lot of people know about this like there could be people watching like die hard like sure. horror fans that like have the shit on tape and they know about it and, like yeah of course i know about that but there's a lot of people that never fucking heard of this movie no. ever <laughs> by the way well, it's not like it's like easily accessible. Like again, it's not like it's on Tubi. It's not. No, again, it's it, not. It, like you just said, the the Blu-ray's out of print. The Blu-ray's out of p- print. This is. It's actually streaming on Amazon if you have Prime. Oh. So if you have Prime, give it give it a spin uh, this week before New Year's hits. I never actually got my hands on the uh, the Blu-ray. The 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 rip that rewatched was a rip of that Blu-ray though. Okay. We don't. I don't actually f- physically own that. Okay. One, got you. Got you. Got you. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I do you have any other trivia for this movie? You want to get into this? Not really. Uh, like like you said, I just wanted to add that note that like more people should watch this because it is that first. Not only is the first slasher movie period of the eighties, but it also is a Christmas slasher <laughs> movie. Hence it being part of trashing through the snow. Merry Christmas. You want to give us a plot dump on this one, Joe? Oh, geez. Okay. Um. So have you seen Friday the Thirteenth? <laughs> yeah, four months after this. Okay, four months. Yes. Okay. Wait. <laughs> no, <laughs> um, uh, it, it is wild how many little things are are, are similar. Though, there's a lot of there's a films. lot of pieces from different things. That I, I, I feel that like people we'll are about. sharing script notes <laughs> between sets. Like, ah, oh, we have this in ours. Like, we have this in ours. Yeah, yeah. don't tell. Yeah, you think Cunningham was like working, like Jeez. talking to David Hester? Gonna take dinner. David Hester to court next. <laughs> I have the writing the rights to this fucking movie. I have <laughs> I have writing parts in it. No, that's the British guy who owns like the Friday Thirteenth oh, name oh, or whatever. Excuse me, or the characters and right. shit. Someone's coming after somebody. Is it's, the point? It's, they're gonna they want that buck. So on Christmas vacation two years ago, a sorority girl was being hazed, and the way they were hazing this girl was terrorizing her with Christmas stuff, like dressing up like uh, uh, Santa Claus and having an axe. Anyway, they accidentally knock her off a balcony and she dies. 
<laughs> Pretty much. And then uh, the next year, there is somebody in a Santa suit going around killing co-eds. Right. And that's pretty much it. Yeah, yeah. It in does, a nutshell. It does. It gets a little deeper than that when well, you sure. find out who the killer well, is. We're, we're plot crunching. Right, but yeah, absolutely. That is the movie. Mm-hmm. A lot of sex. There's a lot of sex. There's a lot of boobs. Um, But it's not like, like, this is a comfortable amount. You know what I mean? It, oh, while the nudity. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Especially for the content. Again, yeah. it, it, they're college students. I mean, we we've seen plenty like Ghoulies Three uh, this year is another one that comes to mind with the college setting. Well, not as that much. had way more boobs, way and more asses. boobs. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's what that's what I mean. Like, it's not like it's not like a high school titty comedy. No, you know I mean? no, that's or a college true. titty comedy. I guess we could just jump off. Jump, yeah, 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 just jump right into this. I mean, it, it starts off with that flashback yeah. with this girl, like you just said. Pretty much, there's not much more to say other than she's no. being hazed, and uh, yeah, like Joe said, they they chase her to this balcony and like. There's information in this scene that you don't know is important till later, but like she gets pushed off the edge more or less. And, and it, it seems half an accident, half on purpose. But regardless, this girl's fucking dead. And that was never anybody's intent based on the reactions of all the students. Yeah. And you can actually see a couple of the characters that are in the movie in this scene. Not that you would know that on your first viewing. No. But and it's very like blink and you miss it. Yeah. There's only a couple. They, they they do show it again at one point in the film and it's a little bit more obvious. But yeah. it was kind of cool to like go back on a second view and be like, oh, yeah. And like kind of put that together. There they are. But then, uh, yeah, you jump ahead a year or two later and it's Christmas vacation, the present. Yeah, exactly. We, we get our the only person in this movie that has any recognition <laughs> Uh, Ghostbusters icon Jennifer Runyon herself. I guess I was just about to say eight o'clock. She's waiting for Doctor Venkman to call her. You know, she's like keeps c- complaining that she can't get a date or she can't get laid or whatever. <laughs> Venkman stood her up, and she hasn't been the same since. You're truly a phenomenon. Yeah. Uh, don't let's lest we forget she is in the Roger Corman classic Carnosaur. I was gonna say Carnosaur. That's yeah. the other thing she's known yeah. for. And she's fine in this. I think this might be like, if not her first movie, one of her first movies. Yeah. She's very young in this. I guess what Ghostbusters this her, this was is, a couple years after this. Ghostbusters 84. is 84. Yeah. This is her first film. I think she's fine in she's this. She's good. I mean, I, she plays the mousy girl. I, I, I kind of joked going into this, like your top build actor is Jennifer Runyon. You're in trouble. But like, she's <laughs> pretty mean, good in this. I think everybody's pretty decent. Yeah, like, no, well, I mean, yeah. it goes from like good to real fucking bad. Yeah. No. Well, yeah. But, there's but, a couple uh, characters. But yeah. We also get a porn star at one point, which we'll talk about. Um, yeah, so it opens up, and, and we're at the college, and it's it's Christmas vacation, and everybody's going around. They're saying goodbye. Some people are leaving. Some people are staying, which ultimately culminates in our core group of sorority sisters, I guess, right. staying home for the holiday, staying at the sorority for the holiday because they have a plan to fuck some dudes. <laughs> the rich boys. The fuck the- well, this is also a super rich college, by the oh, way. Oh, right, which they keep bringing up throughout yeah. the film. Like, oh, a lot of these uh, these women's parents, they're, they're, they're movie stars, they're politicians, yeah. we can't fuck this up. <laughs> so, right, right, on, right out of the gate, it's like, oh, this is very Black Christmas. Everybody's True. gone except True. these particular girls. For whatever reason, they're staying here. They got the house mother. Yeah, Mrs. Jensen. Mrs. Jensen's the, the house mother. She's making them stew and shit. And their plan is to drug her with some warm milk. With some warm milk and milk, and I don't know what a fucking uh, MD a horse, a horse tranquilizer. Yeah, well, right, exactly. Oh yeah, some MDUs. Yeah, yeah, she'll be fucking. Well, she'll be tripping balls then. Yeah, she, she, her fucking penis is gonna fall off. <laughs> she doesn't even have one. It's gonna fall. She's off. She's gonna grow one, and then it's gonna fall. That's off. what it, <laughs> it's gonna melt into her into her vagina. So uh, <laughs> body melt. The episode that just keeps on giving it does. all the, year the whole, round. The, the, bingo. Yeah, there you go. Somewhere in there's a crucifixion <laughs> line. Somewhere in that jing, that jingle jangle mess. Um. So so, so yeah, they basically uh, that's the plan. Yeah. And these guys fly in on a literally fu- on a fucking plane. Like, oh, talk about fuck you, money. One of the main chicks, Leah, is like, oh yeah, my boyfriend TJ is fucking flying in on an actual plane at the landing strip that's near this fucking. <laughs> Very exclusive girls' <laughs> school or college. Right. Well, the finishing school. The finishing. Oh, yeah. The fucking finishing school. All right. That, that is some 70s and 80s ass shit, uh, I guess. I guess. But it's the trope of like everybody's a fucking, you know, a floozy and a drunk. Yeah. yeah. And the one thing I do really like about this as you're getting this set up, uh, you're kind of getting intercut. Uh, this, this, which 
you get your Italian influence here with oh almost like a giallo ass uh, uh, killer at first. It's, it's a very. I was I was trying I was racking my brain to try to remember like what specific giallo I was thinking of, but we could talk about that a little bit later. I mean, like a blade in the dark comes to mind for sure. I mean, Me- granted, they're in that Santa costume not long after this, but the original like leather jacket. Yeah, but with I the mean, gloves. so many do that. Sure, like yeah. uh, like bird with the crystal plumage. Deep, re- nearly all of Argento true. shit has well, a true. leather glove clad killer with a fucking razor or knife or something. But that's what I thought the movie was going to be. I didn't really like, think about this. I forgot about the Christmas angle for a minute, and yeah. I'm like, oh, this is what we're getting. This is cool. It's more like a pieces too. Oh yeah, it yeah. also feels like House on Sorority Row. Wow, like specifically like with how this is set up and what we're what we're starting to do here because yeah. when you get that clip, it's the fucking work gloved killer with like a fucking list of names that they like cross out uh, yeah. and then pick up the picture of the girl who was tossed off the fucking balcony. Yep, yep. A lot of visual story. It's revenge, baby. Here we go. Merry uh, Christmas. And then, like, Jennifer Runyon is just like, I think her name in the actual movie is Nancy. Nancy, yeah. Uh, but she's like, yeah, I saw somebody weird, like, walking around the property. Like, this guy Billy or something. And and everyone's just, like, gaslighting. Like, ah, you didn't see shit. Like, yeah, <laughs> shut up. You're just mad you didn't get laid. She's like, I really saw somebody. The, right out of the gate, like, they're eating stew and yeah. like eating pie and shit at the at the table. Like, Cherry pie. Ta- talking about their how they're going to do their their business with these guys and there's with their one, Irish whispers. Yeah, and there's like one girl, like Cassie, I think her name is, mm. and she's like upstairs, so very akin to like the chick who gets plastic bag oh, yeah. in the closet, but like uh, from Black Christmas. But like she's like stripping in front of this window. And her boyfriend's oh, Cynthia. outside. Yeah, Cynthia, yeah, 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 excuse yeah, yeah. me. Cynthia. I only know that because like the guys are like, come on, Cynthia. I got that uh, false prophet in my head, dude. <laughs> oh yeah, oh put yeah. You, put your hands on me, Cassie. Merry Christmas. Anyway, uh, talks from the dark side. Go check it out. It's back, it's baby. Back, it's back. Yeah, but he, her boyfriend's like outside, right, like, yelling smoke, up yeah, to her, and yeah. he's like, he's like, come on, baby, what the fuck? Look, we gotta go. <laughs> I did. She, they they kind of get me. I was expecting because you see that someone walking up with like jeans on, and you see her put jeans on. Yeah, I'm like, ah, they, this is like one of those going to be one of those fake out kills, like where it's just she grabs him on the shoulder. Yeah. No, it actually was the killer. It was a good one with the, the Jason Voorhees machete to the neck again, predating the movie. But I, I think what I like the best is that the killer's not immediately dressed like Santa Claus. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, At first, I, it's just yeah. like a black. It's just a black jacket and pants with like work gloves. Yep. Yep. And this big ass Bowie knife that yeah. that. that that fucking dude gets stabbed with. It's great. And uh, Cynthia ends up like going outside and she gets it to the fucking chest, dude. Like, boom. Oh my God. Yeah. And then so like, 10 minutes in, we're already killing people. Uh, yeah. And then like, it, it kind of works though, because like, as the movie goes on, like, like there are characters that are concerned as, as we kind of get deeper into this. But like, then there's other characters that are just like, ah, they're out having fun. Who gives a fuck? Like they're fine. And it's like, okay, like, uh, me watching the movie is like bad idea, but then like putting myself in their shoes, it's like I'd probably be on the team of like we should be more concerned, but I also could see where the people that aren't concerned are coming from because they're just like there to party anyway. Sure, so it's believable. Yeah, but they're also not supposed to be there. That's the whole. Well, there's thing. that too because yeah. it's a so they're like hey, thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. it's an all girls right school. Also, there's this character we got to talk about. Oh, Fast Ralph, baby. Fast Ralph, who looks like Tennessee Luke from fucking Tim and Eric. <laughs> Even kind of talks like him. He has like a very specific cadence. Man, I was, I had somebody on the tip of my tongue, like trying to figure out like who it was. I'm like, this guy looks, looks and sounds so fucking familiar. And I just could not pinpoint it. I, he sounds like Tennessee. He's a DVD monster. Well, it kind of sounds like, you know, he's a little bit of Southern in there. Uh, yeah, he is he's like... Big, li- tall guy, groundskeeper. He is literally a red herring, and I say that specific... Yeah. I mean, he is, but also he's Trailer. wearing this bright fucking red Santa Claus ass fucking, like, under... Uh, he's, he's like thermal underwear. Yeah, 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 and he's walking around in. I love his lines because he's like, he's like, God gave us plants, and I love plants. Yeah, that's great. Uh, yeah, there's like stew and cherry pie downstairs. He's like, I like cherry pie. He's like, yeah, whatever. Uh, just let Nancy know that you're leaving or whatever. He's like, I like Nancy too. Uh, yeah, that that's creepy. They, it's actually, I, it's, it's a good red herring. It's honestly. a platonic thing. He's just like he thinks he's well, nice. sure, yeah, and like you know, it's not sexual or weird or anything like that. I thought it was, but yeah, I mean, after well, you find out what happens, it's kind of like his daughter, like, he's looking out for her because he doesn't want anything bad to happen to her. Well, in retrospect, yeah. sure, but at the time, like, I first viewing, I'm like, I don't know about this guy. That's what they want you to think. 100%. Good one, David. 
Yep. <laughs> I got to give it to Mr. Hess. Yeah, he got me. He got me good. A couple times now already. But like one key thing when those guys all show up on the, the fucking chartered plane. Holy shit. Two, two things, actually. They leave the pilot behind, even though it's very clear they're all going back to this place to fuck. They're like, yeah, you stay with the plane, buddy. He's like, ah, come on. The funniest fucking thing about that is the pilot's played by Harry Reams. Okay. Who was like a famous porn, oh. porn star at the time. Like big time. <laughs> okay, so some an inside joke there. Then. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but also they all come wearing these Santa outfits. Yes, all of them are dressed as Santa. Right, and then like that's important because then we cut to this like tool shed where someone now dressed like Santa Claus is grabbing fucking Cropsy's cutting shears off the wall. Oh yeah, he borrowed that shit straight up. Uh, yeah, and, and then you do see Fast Ralph with the cutting shear yeah. or, or hedge shears, whatever the fuck they're called. And you're like hedge clippers. Oh, hedge clippers. Yeah. You're like, oh, why does he have them? Santa had them. Oh, what's happening? happening it's, it's kind of clever no I, I i i like that because like you have right you have him set up but then everybody's wearing a santa claus costume so it could literally be any of them right and, and ralph is like you said like he's saying all that like biblical stuff but he's also just saying weird shit like i can sense the evil around here and it's like all right does that mean you're the killer or you're gonna be killed because you're just mouthing off about the killer like where are we going with this <laughs> No, like waiting for that shoe to drop, Joe. <laughs> so all, they're all hanging out. This dude's playing a fucking guitar horribly, by and the he's way. like, he's like, I'm no good at singing, and like that's the punchline of the joke, which is pretty funny. Yeah, no, that's good. Yeah, your your you're playing wasn't so good, but I, I I see what you're doing there, pal. Yeah, so they're 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 fucking kicking back some brew boys and some fucking J boys, and <laughs> they're and getting ready. That. The orgy's starting. Oh, soon. the orgy's the orgy's. We're getting lubed up and ready to go, man. Uh, there's this one uh, British girl who I really don't think she's British. <laughs> Uh, where her tits are p constantly about constantly. to fall out of her shirt. She's like, oh, you want to stick it in me bum? Like, every fucking thing is a sexual innuendo. I'm going to go- Where you want it, love, up in your fucking rear. Yeah. I'm going to go into the other room, stick a beer bottle up my ass, and then just <laughs> and fuck out of the movie, I guess. A bubbly little bottom. Because <laughs> she disappears into the other room to get drinks, and then, like, gets fucking killed from behind. She gets her fucking throat slit. Yeah. And there's blood and beer all over the floor. Yeah. And then they're just like, oh, man, it's taking her a long time for the beer. But no one, like, goes in the chi in the kitchen and checks on her. We don't find the beer and blood for like another 30 minutes. <laughs> well, yeah, and the person that fi Nancy finds it later and just cleans it up like, like it's cranberry huh, sauce. Huh, chicken. Huh, broken. Yeah. But we have this guy who's basically like a lost Baldwin who's like walking around this guy in the Hawaiian t-shirt. Oh my God. Yeah, he got it. Yes. And he's like mouthing off like constantly like, ah, oh, why did I come here? He's like, ah, oh, I just came here to get laid. Ah, oh. oh, come on. <laughs> Where is she with that beer? And he's like going outside, like, arr, 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 like <laughs> pushing his fucking pecs out. Well, we do get into, I just want to note, like, we do get introduced. There's like, there's two other girls yeah. besides Nancy. Well, there's and then Le Leah. Leah is the, the red redhead girl. Then there's like the, the Melody, brunette. Right. It's then Melody. Melody, who's right. the, who's like the, I don't know what you want to call the, her. The flirt who's hitting on like She's the nerdy the flirt. guy, Alex. Yeah. And Alex is funny as hell, dude, because he looks like fucking Paul Dano. I kind of does. Skinny straight, Paul Dano. Dude, young, straight young up. Paul Dano. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So T I just I just wanted to note those characters. Sure. And then, of course, TJ, the, like the main the jock guy. douchebag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But yeah, Hawaii, Hawaii fucking Hawaii Five O goes outside, yeah. and, and this guy like he gets he gets ambushed. But like for a second there, he actually kind of like puts up a fight. He's like not not immediately just going down. He grabs like a log and hits the fucking Santa in the chest with it. <laughs> he runs around and Santa like we like stay on Santa, which is weird. And he like jumps down and he fucking hits him with a huge log. Well, a dolphin died. Yes, obviously, yes. it's in the blood. And then of course Santa smashes his fucking <laughs> dome with a giant rock. Dude, Santa tries to drop this thing so fucking hard it cracked on his head like an egg. <laughs> I'm like, okay, he's not getting up from that one. Fucking fucking uh, hamburger meat all over it's, his face. It's pretty good. I'm, yeah. I'm into it. It's, it's it's a good kill. Oh yeah, and Trisha's like stuffed into a fucking train. Oh, that's her name. Or something. Trisha, yeah, 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 yeah. The the British chick. Right, right, right. I, I kind of like this Santa costume because it's just like you don't know if it's just like someone that's like fat like Santa or they're wearing like a, like a fat suit. It's and just a big. It's a big coat. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it's, yeah. just, it's like one of those creepy Santa masks. Yeah. It's not just a beard. Yeah. And it's it's shot in a way where you never can see like behind the eye holes or it's always yeah. far enough away where you can't really tell like who who or what they are. I always think of the uh, the Crypt Keeper, the mm. Santa mask that he wears yeah, in yeah, the yeah. HBO series uh, and all through the house. Like when he opens up the episode, yeah. that fucking shit's creepy as hell. Then we come to, mind you guys, we're kind of skimming over some shit because there's a lot of dicking around in this movie. Yeah. There's, there's like, a lot of, there's a lot of, hey, let's go here. Hey, let's fuck here. Hey, get me a beer. 
Hey, get me a drink. I mean, hey, do this. There's a whole scene at one point where Alex and fucking Jennifer Runyon like go up to like the third floor. That's at the end. Find nothing and then come back down. Yeah. And it's like literally in the movie for padding. Just be like, all right, we needed to put like five minutes of bullshit in the movie to make this runtime be an hour and 30 minutes. Which is unfortunate because this scene is probably my favorite scene. Yeah. I mean, I know that scene that I just mentioned at the yeah. end, but it's like, why is this here? <laughs> to, uh, to, to amp up. The, yeah. Well, to amp up the, uh, the, the tension. Mm. Right? The stalk sequence. No, sure. All those shots of Santa Claus's feet just fucking shuffling around, I guess. Yeah, okay. Well, yeah, but this scene's one of my favorites because it sticks out like a sore thumb, and it's fucking awesome. Mm. So these two are getting down, the the brunette and uh, the one who, the fastest girl in school, <laughs> and fucking, you know- You okay? Mr. Tall, Paul Bunyan man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, who's about to destroy this little girl on the floor. <laughs> on top of this, is this the bear? They're fucking on top of They're fucking on the bearskin oh rug. Oh my God. Man, I did Somebody not, might walk in. I did not see this coming and I did not remember this. Uh, so instead of Santa coming in and killing them, this fucking knight of <laughs> there's like a there's like a suit of armor. Yeah. And it fucking picks up a crossbow and shoots this guy in the back of the head and it comes out of his mouth like right in front of yeah, her face. Yeah. And then it takes a giant battle axe and cuts this chick's head off. It's fucking it's the best kill movie. It's, it's the best part of the it's, whole movie. It's great. And the only thing that gets kind of telegraphed is like when they first start boning, yeah. it like pans up to like this crossbow on the wall. But then like you you go to a different scene and then it comes back and you get that and it's like, oh, I just thought like the crossbow would be gone and they were gonna get shot. I didn't like the the person was just standing there waiting for in this. a suit of yeah, arm like some yeah. Scooby Doo shit. Like he the guy's about to blow his load and he gets this in the back of his head. Oh, that's yeah. what I, that's what I wanted to say in the do beginning. You he, do you think when he was dead he blew his load? Like is that like is that considered necrophilia for that like second or two she was still alive it was right at the climax okay so the the shot came at the same time right <laughs> it was dead instantly Unbel afterwards. unbelievable he was yeah. right at the peak of his euphoria yeah, that that's uh uncle frank would be fucking <laughs> proud man he he's clapping in the yeah, afterlife yeah. he's looking through the fucking window the centipedes got him in the mm, christmas smiling time. well yeah. it's christmas time so yeah. they're letting him look uh, at the <laughs> <laughs> so uh, before we keep going i wanted to mention Mm -hmm. uh, I mentioned something earlier and I forgot what it was. Uh, it was it was called Père Noël. Yes. Okay. Uh, th the French movie, which is we've talked about, oh, which we were yeah. going to cover and we didn't cover because for some, I think some, I think Joe Bob was doing it at the time. Yeah, uh, I forget why. But I also want to just note one of the only. We, I, I'm telling you right now, Chris Barr and I were the first people to have Code Père Noël on a fucking DVD with a fucking beautiful transfer with. English subtitles in its original French language from Home Video Express. Obviously, it came out from, you know, they got the rights. It was released oh, wow, sure. legitimately. Yeah, yeah. But, like, I just want to note that because, like, that was something that Chris had shown me that was just so fucking cool. And I, I love the fact that, like, everybody knows about it now. Oh, yeah. Uh, but we were pushing that shit fucking 20 years ago. Oh, my God. Uh, that is kind of crazy. But that's an also another Killer Santa movie that is ah. really good and also has a scene with somebody in... A suit of armor. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I wanted to. That was the through line. It's all there. connected. Yes. So like, just just to set this up, we kind of have this whole like back and forth with Alex and Melody, where like she's hitting on him because she's like kind of turned on by him being smart and he's a virgin, so she takes his virginity. So that's getting her wet because she's like, this guy's never fucked before. Yeah, and it's, it's pretty funny. It's kind of funny too because yeah. the next day he's like talking sports and it's like you know the machismo is kind of seeping into his brain <laughs> he's now. Trying to fuck every. But he's like, let's go play some football. Hey, you want to wrestle? Yeah, he's like, well, I, I fucked the uh, the porno actress. Now I'm going to go after the girl I'm actually interested, I guess. Uh, no, I Jennifer have, Runyon. I have my confidence now. Yeah. Well, well, want to wrestle? Well, the whole want time. Want me to chase you? Well, that's like she's sitting in the room, you know, next door listening and having the time of their life. And the next day he's like, yeah, I always thought you were kind of cute while she listened to him get fucked the night before by this other chick. <laughs> this is also but true. But anyway, so him and Melody are chasing each other through the woods, kind of playing cat and mouse. And, uh. He bumps into Jennifer Runyon and then like they're kind of chit chatting and then they're running from each other playfully. Yeah. So they start to get like nobody's has nobody's boyfriend or girlfriend. They're just like nah, it's just, they're, they're playing, you know, it's whatever. But there's a part where Ralph comes and talks to Jennifer Runyon. Oh, right. Before that. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. he's like, he's like, oh, hey, just want you to know that like you better pray. There's a devil coming in the house. There's a lot of evil. And uh, 
I care about you, and I want you to pray, okay? You, I, I'm going to save you. I'll always be there to save you. I uh, cut to the next day where she trips over his corpse, and he's been, like, scalped. Like, the whole top of his head's, like, ripped off. He's got a fucking axe mark in the middle of this motherfucker's head. Uh, they step on him, and he pops up like a rake. Oh, my God. He's, like, that Resident Evil figure, like the zombie yeah. from back in the day that, like, pops up. For Aspire, he's yeah. right there. Oh, yeah, that's what yeah, it was, yeah. yeah. Uh... I, I, yeah, he's fucking dead. And I guess, like, the scene, like, earlier, like, the day before, they show a couple shots of Santa just burying the people that they've killed. And, it's... like, you see this tuft of hair. <laughs> and I'm like, was that Ralph's hair? Was that Tennessee Luke's fucking hair? I love that. Because, like, there's periods where we just watch Santa bury bodies. Uh, for, like, minutes. Like, stepping on hands and then, like, burying it and shit. <laughs> but, he, but Santa doesn't bury... Crushing bear... them into the dirt. <laughs> Vin- Farmer Vincent's fritters, dude. Yeah, wow. Um, but uh, the the head that he severed, he, he doesn't bury. Well, <laughs> it's in a bucket. We'll get. We'll talk. There's about a it. reason for that later, <laughs> so we can have this fucking. Stupid it's a great pun. It's a great payoff. It is, but it's a stupid pun. Uh, Santa's very neat and tidy. He likes to keep it clean. Oh, that's true. You know? This Santa in particular. This threw me for a loop. Okay, because after this burying scene, it cuts to morning, and I'm like, oh. Well, right, this is I thought this just took place in all in one night. We cut immediately that's where you cut to Alex being horny at the fucking breakfast table. Like, oh yeah, Yeah. the Rams are gonna win this week. I don't know. It's just it's just weird because it's like, oh, the okay. And then it's like now we have to go through a whole day before we get Uh, to the killing again. Yeah, and that's that's also the scene where like everyone's like, Yeah, where the fuck's like half of our friends? And TJ's like, ah, they're out having a good time. No ruin I don't ruin my vacation. They're fucking in some room. Yeah. We don't know where they the, are. The plane's broken, apparently. I guess Sean missed that detail while watching it. <laughs> so did Joe. I was like, what? The plane's broken. <laughs> well, Harry Reams was fucking that plane and it broke. I what I think is they just told the fucking Miss Jensen that because they don't want to get in trouble. No, no, no. That's exactly what happened. Yeah, yeah. With the, yeah. The, the, the gag there is they just arrived this morning. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay. And they're like, yeah, we didn't stay here and fuck all the girls last night. <laughs> all night. DJ's <laughs> fucking jumping from girl to girl, man. He doesn't give a fucking who. No. Uh, but yeah, then we get the whole chase scene where they find Ralph. And uh, But but they, but they something specifically I want to note oh, here yeah, was yeah. that they asked Miss Jensen how she slept. And she's like, I'm fine. Oh, well, right. With Marity the milk. was fine. It was great. Yeah, that I, I warm love, milk really it, did me it in. Was, doesn't even mention that. It's just like, uh, yeah, I slept good. Thanks. I'll see you later when I'm important for the plot again. Bye. I'll be in the kitchen. I'll be in my office. <laughs> but yeah, so then, you know, Ralph gets found. And then now the cops are involved. And then they... <laughs> this, this fucking guy. This made no sense till like the final minute of the film. But I'm like, okay, you're sending the police chief to this college to look at this murder. Okay, the chief's going. Sure. Well, <sighs> it makes sense later. But at first, I'm just like, okay, this is off. The chief and the cops are dressed in like fucking leisure shoes. Yeah, they, they look like mafia they members. They look like mobsters. Yeah. They don't look like cops. And he is a he's fucking whatever in all over the place, dude. Oh, I swear to chief God, Chief Polanski. Uh, yeah, I swear to God, one of his henchmen is fucking bodied by Jake before he got on PCP. <laughs> the guy that fucks Leah yes, later. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, this is before he got on the drug, before he went all crazy and he attacked those people on Thanksgiving. Sean, a man's been mited up here. Okay. Well, right, because that's the whole thing. The rich boy. Oh, please, you can't tell our parents. They, they can't know I'm here. I'll get expelled. To, we're not supposed to be here. Yeah, that's his big fucking concern. So, so the cop's like, there's a fucking dead man. What are you talking about? So the main fucked up, I mean, it makes sense later, but the main fu- fucked up takeaway from this are two are two things. Yeah. Uh, well, the main one is the fact that he, like, touches Jennifer Runyon's face, and he's like, he's like, it's going to be okay. Everything's, hey, everything's going to be okay. No, yeah, I mean, especially, again, when you find out Something later, but yeah, yeah we'll yeah, leave it at that for now. Even yeah, we spoil the shit out of it. We might as well have some kind of mystery. I, I know, on this show. but it was just like one of those things. Like, okay, that's something's yeah. fucked up here. Um, and then the second thing is Ralph. He's like, he's like that Ralph guy. He was a fucking piece of shit. He was like, he had like, uh, he was in the pen for like armed I, robbery yeah, and he was aggravated assault with a, with a deadly weapon. <laughs> some uh, shit. Yeah, yeah. We're but, gonna go find his buddies and see if they know anything. Yeah, it's like, okay. Ralph Kramer. We're gonna find his brother. He, we heard he has fucking uh, contraptions built in the bottom of a fucking city somewhere. Yeah, John Kramer, I think his name is. So he has fucking Joey and Bobby fucking stay at the house. Uh, to to watch over him, like patrol the house, which is very like like Polanski- all they do is eat dinner, <laughs> and go to sleep, and fuck the fuck the coeds. They do nothing. 
<laughs> no police work. The chief is like again. That's supposed to be like this the John Saxon character. You know? Oh yeah, hundred <laughs> percent from Black Christmas. Oh yeah. Uh, but that exactly what they do. They have the stew. They just kind of hang out. Like the one cop actually kind of tries to do his job. Like yeah. patrols. There's a there's a there's a really good line that I want to mention. And he uh, he's like he's like that's what you said before. He's like, oh, all of you, you know, don't touch these girls because uh, they they all got connections to right, fucking yeah. politics and all this stuff. And he's like, he's like, you touch any of them fillies, and I'm gonna permanently change your vocal pitch. You hear what I'm saying there, sweetheart? And they're just like, yeah, that's okay, uh, we're not gonna get like <laughs> our our paid doc if we just fucking follow what he says. Like, fuck that. Hey, fuck them anyway. Yeah, I don't care. Uh, but yeah, like the one guy does kind of start to patrol around and he's like immediately 86 by Santa Claus and like this like yeah. weak ass kill where like Santa's just like, hello, and, like drops the <laughs> axe Santa's, on his head. Santa's carrying an axe. And he's like, what the fuck are you dressed up like Santa for? Whatever. Yeah. And he just goes, huh? And the yeah. axe goes right in this motherfucker's head. I mean, it's I good. guess it's the weight of an axe. Okay. It's like maybe the only bad kill in the movie. I don't know, dude. Still looks good. That's like, I don't know, eight or 10 pounds I'm coming down on like, your fucking dome. Whoo- it was yeah. a slow ass drop. <laughs> Whatever. Let's drop an axe on your head. I'd be fucking dead. I know. Happened. I'm just saying. It just was odd the speed at which it was coming in. Oh, sure, sure, all. sure, sure. Uh, again, meanwhile, it's other... very, it's very uh, uh, nonchalant. Yeah, <laughs> this, this guy's actually trying to do his job. Other guys like Lane and fucking Leah's bed, fucking her in the shower. He, t- she takes him up there. Yeah, and he's like, "This is my bed." He's like, "Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> okay, maybe later." And she like. Goes up there and fucks him later. Well, because she gets like in an argument with TJ because he won't like get the plane like to get him the fuck out of there when they when they start to think that their friends are getting killed or or something's <laughs> off. But He's like, ah, no, I'm not getting my pilot. She's like, well, I'm going upstairs alone, and then she like fucks that other guy. Yeah, but that's also her meal ticket because she yeah. takes. She says before that like, oh yeah. I got to marry this guy because he's loaded or whatever, and he's pretty good in bed or something. Not the best, but he's pretty good. Good enough. It's like, all right. Sure. Fuck the fucking well, I love, police guy. I, I, sure. love, I love, though, he goes upstairs to, like, check on her. But he goes for a beer run. Yeah. And then he's like. Beer run. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the oh, ghoulies yeah. are Talk there. Talk about ghoulies. Oh, yeah, yeah, they are. He hears her, like, fucking the guy, and he just, like, shakes his head like, ah, oh, Leah. And he goes back downstairs like. Well, I guess okay. He's not that upset. I guess he kind of knows what he's getting into. Well, he goes, he's like, well, Melody's down there. She's upset. She's looking for love. Yeah, and this is also true. He's like, well, I had my eye on her anyway. Uh, so yeah. Uh, so this cop's about to settle down for a long winter's nap, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Leah goes into the shower, and Santa comes fucking traipsing up the stairs. Yeah, like uh, jiggling the door handle and everything. <laughs> Leah, like I love how she turns the water on, gets fucking naked as shit. And then opens the the shower, and it's just her friend's severed head yeah. hanging there. Her her friend's head on the shower head. It's oh, I didn't, shower oh. head! It's a fucking shower head! It's so stupid, but it is cool. I didn't even fucking put that together. Yeah. I was not even thinking about the that. I was just like, head. oh, that's cool. The, the head's hanging in the shower. It's, it's a dumb pun, but I'm kind of into it because it's creepy as shit. And then Paul Giamatti fucking comes in. <laughs> Get dead with, with, the, the back. with the knife in his back. Oh, yeah, yeah. Give me some PCP quick. <laughs> I need some turkey. <laughs> uh, that's what I'm saying. Body by Jake. Get him some turkey. He'll be okay. He needs that fucking experimental PCP from uh, from John Hurt, of course. Oh, well, obviously. So then uh, Leah's just screaming in terror, and Santa's just standing there. But I guess this like breaks her fucking brain because the rest of the movie she's, she's just dancing and like looping. mumbling to herself. Yeah. She's just looping, having a good old time. We'll talk about that. I mean, she's alive, but I no one's in, uh, no one's awake inside. Totally broke, but she's she's been the fun one. You well, know what that's I mean, the doing point, her whole I think. thing. Yeah, but Santa yeah. doesn't kill her for some reason. I don't, yeah, that's a weird that's one. a weird that's a weird thing. So Paul Dano's trying to fuck Jennifer Runyon. <laughs> Right now they're together. Now they want to fuck. Yeah, and then Melody's fucking TJ. So they're like going at it outside, and Santa <laughs> fucking has like lowers this gar- garrot wire. Oh my god! And, like, like they're fishing, and like chokes this dude, and like picks him up. It's like a Roy special, dude, with the fucking tree oh, yeah. branch when he yeah. twists that guy's head with the belt. Uh, now there were some things happening. In this sequence where I'm yeah. sitting there saying, all right, does Santa Claus have teleportation powers? Because this is a slasher movie, so that wouldn't shock me. Mm-hmm. No, he doesn't actually this time. Well, it's coming. Uh, I know what, I know what you're getting yeah, at. So anyway, well, hold that thought. Yes. So TJ dies. And Melody runs and Melody in. Melody runs inside. And, in they, blood. and they're covered in blood. Here's the thing. Right. We have 20 minutes of this movie left. 
Yeah, which is is kind of too much for what they need to show. Right. Okay. I, I, no, I think it's plenty, but they don't do enough with it, and I'll explain okay, why. Okay, okay. We don't even try to cover up who is Santa at this point. It's kind of just like if Melody, you're watching the movie, you can kind of figure it out. If you're like, well, this no, character hasn't shown up in like no, 40 minutes. Not even. Melody runs out of the house. Yeah. Santa shows up and throws off his mask. Well, right. And who is it? It's Mrs. Voorhees, obviously. <laughs> yes. Basically, looks like, Voorhees. she fucking, Mrs. Jensen looks like Mrs. Voorhees. And that's what makes it even funnier that those movies came out so close to each other Mrs. with the short blonde hair. Uh, Mrs. Jensen can get it for, for an older lady. Yeah. She is the killer. Right. And I kind of saw it coming. She's there and she's like, you, you a boy drowned at the lake. You let him die. He's my special boy, my yeah. beautiful boy. No, my beautiful daughter. Uh, you threw her off a fucking balcony. My favorite part of this is something we don't get in Friday the 13th because True. she's like, you did this. You were one of them. You you, you harassed her and made her jump off the east. She's like, and Jennifer is like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, this is my first year here. I don't even know your daughter. Yeah. Okay. I thought that was pretty good. Okay, Jennifer Runyon. So, well. Maybe. You fucking liar. <laughs> Miss Jensen, basically they do like a, a, a scene where she chases her around the house. Yeah, Miss Stalk Jensen. Stalk There's a stock scene, which is pretty good. Yeah. And they like, they there's like a rough and tumble thing where they where they fight each other a little bit. And there's this weird scene, right? So we all know what the culmination of it. This is why we went up the stairs before. Because it needed to show you where the fuck that balcony was. Uh, well, okay, fine. Yeah, I, I, that, I, sure. This is a weird scene because... This is to like call back to the beginning. Th this is like the end game here, right? Right, yeah. Where the poetic justice happens. Yeah, I guess, yeah. Yeah, because it was an accident in the first place. And this person's just been killing people. So they're getting their comeuppance the same way that their daughter was killed accidentally. Except on purpose <laughs> this time. <laughs> uh, yeah. So it's weird because Jennifer Runyon goes at her and uh, Mrs. Voorhees is coming at her. And then it cuts to the scene from the beginning of her daughter falling. Right. So we don't actually see like Jennifer Runyon hit her or shoot her or stab her or anything. It just cuts to the girl falling and hitting the ground. And then Mrs. Jensen's just on the ground in the in the Santa outfit. It's very unsatisfying. It, it, it's they're trying to show something visually that is just not very well told visually if that makes any sense because it's like Jennifer Runyon is supposed to be the girl in the beginning in the red with the Santa hat on it's supposed to mirror that she was part of the people pushing her against the edge of the balcony sure and she fell but this time it was like supposed to be because like the way they're cutting it together they want you to think it's like inner because it's like flash 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 like has happening simultaneously like Joe saying it's like you don't actually see her push her but you get the well she obviously pushed her because how else did she fucking fall from the balcony right. but the way to do that is to have a satisfying uh, exchange of oh, yeah. blows and then she goes over and hits the pavement agreed then after she hits the plane pavement let's flash her daughter in the same position and there you go. Exactly. But they're like hung up on this whole concept of, well, it's going to be exactly like the opening because you won't get the point otherwise. It's like we saw it fucking three times. We like, get okay, it. yeah, we And get... then she just explained it. She clearly like <laughs> ran at the girl with the other people and pushed her over the edge. I, again, doubt she was actually actively thought someone would die. But the point, I suppose, is, yeah, she really was there. She, she, she was lying, saying she wasn't. And yes, she was part of the reason why this girl died. I don't know if she was lying. I just don't think that person was identified is the thing. That's no, the, that's what I'm saying. Is yeah. that literally that's her in the flashback. No, I'm saying that it might not be her. It might be. No, it is her. 100%. I rewound and looked. Are you sure? I paused it. It's her. Okay. That's the whole thing. It's just super unclear. And, and the fact that we're even having this debate if you want to call it even a fucking debate it's a testament it's a, to the it, fact that they, it's very confusing. unclear yeah 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 i don't I, yeah but that's my read on it no that sure that's supposed to be her and she's just like oh no i wasn't there but she clearly was yeah, i mean would you say you were there fuck no <laughs> i don't know what you're talking about lady. Uh, yeah, i also probably would have like transferred schools or something but there's like there, there's a lot of things that they could have done they're all very okay with it but they're also spoiled rich kids so they're well, used right. to getting away with shit like that they're like oh oops, well sorry. i mean in the opening of the film she's like oh take care of my cat and like the family right, leaves right, and everything right, right. but whatever that doesn't mean she she should immediately be assumed to be a murderer no uh so leah's dancing around yeah and she's right, yeah. fucking cuckoo at this point she's just like yeah, she's done she's cooked <laughs> and she's like come on we gotta leave or whatever so they go downstairs and 
you see another Santa bringing in Mrs. Jensen in the Santa suit, and you're like, oh, fuck. There's two! There's right. two! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's uh, her husband. <sighs> Who is? Which is fine. Which is fine. That's it okay. Is, it's okay. It is fine. It's, o- just... it's okay. But the it's Mr. Polanski, the chief, right, yeah. the chief police. Which which then makes sense that the chief of fucking police is there for this murder. It's like, all right, fine. Now it actually kind of makes sense that the head guy would show up for this fucking homicide. Yeah, because they were getting killed. Because those two cops that he, I guess he hates those two cops. That's he's why like, he's like, em. fuck it. I can spare yeah, these yeah, assholes. Yeah, Kill yeah. them all. They are a drain on my fucking uh, payroll. <laughs> They're obviously the scumbags because yeah. they're fucking the chicks in the sorority. Oh, that's house. true. That's true. Yeah. Uh, this is kind of like twist kind of comes out of nowhere. Like, I, I definitely. You killed my wife and you killed our daughter. Yeah. Ah. I, I mean, the, the the house mother being the killer, I kind of saw coming like 40 minutes in, but him being a part of it, I, I, that kind of caught me off guard. Yeah. So I was like, all right. No, but the house mother's a good twist. I like that. It's a good a twist, lot, but yeah. I saw it coming. This, I was like, whoa. Sure. Yeah. Didn't see that coming at all. You so know, I was like, oh, bro. You, know you know what else I didn't see coming? Paul Dano firing the fucking crossbow and shooting this guy in the fucking head with it. He looks like that fucking guy from Troll 2 that <laughs> scream. Oh my god! Oh my god. And, yeah. Uh, but yeah, he fires the crossbow. And We're all the girls, Elliot. Uh, yeah, exactly. This yeah. this fucking arrow's like this long. It's not even fit on the screen. This <laughs> thing's like so harpoon. long. Yeah. Oh my god! Right to the chest. Uh, it's awesome. Uh, I think it's really good. I, it just about hits Jennifer Runyon. Thank God she backed up. Look, it's a very specific crossbow because if it didn't hit that chickadee, that brunette in the face when it came right through the dude's head, that's true. I think she's safe. Yeah, skulls, bones, <laughs> anything that stops it in its tracks. Yeah, that's that's a good point. There's like hooks that pop out the back to stop oh, it from going through. Predator tech. Yes, oh, okay. of course. Yeah, just just lying around this college. Sorority well, it's possible. Campus. Yeah, it's they, the MDU, Sean. Well, that is true. John Hurt may have opened a portal. Uh, Baldwin. <laughs> But a Baldwin relative of some kind was there, so it's always possible. Take it. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, then it basically kind of ends. Like, Alex and Nancy leave. They're just like, fuck Leah. She'll, someone will come and get her later, I guess. They just walk away. And this woman's just dancing, like, brain broken. It closes on Leah, like, dancing up in the, up on the, uh, the balcony. And it just, like, turns red, which is kind of cool. And then that's it. It's disturbing. But, yeah, that's the movie. Uh... I like this film. I think it's great. Yeah. I, 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 maybe not the. It's not the best. It's not the best. Christmas just, so, horror what film. would this be uh, under your Christmas tree, Joe? What uh, gift? <clears throat> this is one of my favorite stocking stuffers. Okay, which is those, uh, those chocolate, dark chocolate oranges that you smack mm. and they turn into slices and you can eat them. Those are good. They're fucking. You gotta delicious. make sure you eat them right away, though. Don't let them sit in a plastic bag for six months like I did once. <laughs> <laughs> well, I. The thing is, like, I eat them and they're so good. But then I kind of get sick of them, and yeah. I'm like, all right, that's enough. I can't eat this whole fucking thing. Yeah. Too much too much sweets. And by that, I mean there's a lot of good stuff in this, but I think in doses, a lot of this, it, it, we're, we're, we're dragging ass a lot through it. This is an end of the night watch, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's also, look, there are there are things, to, there are reasons to watch this movie. I Like we said, mentioned in the beginning, it's the first uh, Christmas uh, slasher of the 1980s. It's the it's the first slasher period of the 1980s to come out. Yeah, that's um, true. And, it's, and it just happens to also be a Christmas themed uh, yeah. one. It's actually shot pretty good. So, like, if you've seen this movie on tape, you really need to watch it on that Scorpion releasing uh, Blu-ray, or watch it on Amazon, or watch it restored. Because, of course, like the like the story is with a lot of these old VHS tapes, especially like we talked about Sinjinor and Scared to Death. A lot of it's super dark. And so dark yeah. so that everything gets very, very muddy. Home Sweet Home is the is the most is the worst offender. I was about to bring that up because I yeah. joke about the guy kind of looking like body by Jake. But yeah. yeah, that one's brutal. Um, but the way to watch this is in HD to give it the, its fair shake, and it is available. You can find it if you want to watch it. Um, I think the cinematography is pretty fucking good. The kills are pretty good. Oh, and Mark Showstrom that I didn't talk about in the beginning is on effects here, uh, who's worked on everything from Phantasm two and three to Evil Dead two. Oh, wow. Uh. uh to my demon lover, like a, a ton of shit. So that's cool to see him here, and they're and they're pretty good. Like I really like. There's a couple really good kills in this that are think are, I think are worth price of admission. It's a good uh, sorority horror movie. Yeah, blended with Christmas and and blended with like uh, your traditional slasher. So it, you kind of get a, a lot of different flavors in this. Um, I don't think it's the best of any of those. I, I, like, it doesn't really nail any of those, but I think it's it's good enough to watch. Um, this is like, 
if Friday the 13th just saw the bird with the crystal plumage <laughs> and then was shot on the set of Black Christmas. Um, it, right. it tries to be all of those things at, at once. And um, it's it's good. I'm not going to say it's great. I'm not going to lie to you and say it's great. And you need to you need to absolutely see it. But I think you should see it uh, and add it to your lineup of Christmas films. Yeah. And like on that note, I guess like the gift for me mm. will be almost like uh, rechargeable batteries. OK, it's it's a gift that like, you know, for Keeps some on giving the whole year. I, I, there's that joke okay, again. Yeah. Uh, maybe we said it right this time. We being it, <laughs> Joe said it right. Uh, for me, that's like something I can always kind of rely on. It's not something I like ask for every year, but every other year is always nice. I play a lot of video games. Yeah. The Xbox controller is always always needs a recharge. Sure. Uh, it's not like a gift that I'm like, oh, I absolutely need that, and it's not something like I'm like dreading if I get it in my uh gift bag. I'm just like, oh yeah, I'm gonna put these to use. Like these are gonna go. Th- these aren't a waste. They're gonna they they serve a purpose. Yes. Um, and maybe that's like. Sounds more negative in the in the context of a film than maybe I mean it to be because I did enjoy this a lot. It's like probably a three out of five for me. I think that's I think that's fair. Uh, especially three and like, a half. Uh, well, I, I don't do half stars, Joe. Okay, I, I gotta I'm be sorry. a purist about okay, that. Okay, okay, okay. But uh, I mean, I've talked about this on the show before, and it's just kind of like a lot of these independent films uh, don't always like work for me. But this one, just the the, it, I'm assuming this was an independent film. Yes, but. There's or low budget, I guess I should just low say. Low budget, but there's a lot uh, there's a lot more meat on this bone than I, than I think you're giving it credit for, especially uh with the camera uh mm. the access to the camera equipment that they had. The lighting in this is really good. It's all competently made. I guess it would be more a comparison. I, I guess when I say independent film, I guess I'm talking about stuff like Jack always. I guess it's not like that. It's more like a suckling or like an elves even. Like, I think I, I think this is just a actor. Writer, composer, turned director for a day. Yeah. With a decent amount of money to make a, a horror movie. Yeah, and, I, and I'm not trying to, like, say anything negative. I don't mean it to come across like that. I'm saying this in a positive way. No, light. but but it, it would be like the equivalent of saying that Last House on the Left is a bad movie because it has low production value. Oh, but, oh. Or higher production value on a low budget. I, no, Does that make okay, sense? Yeah, that's not what I mean at all. I, right. Yeah, I get what you're saying okay. now, though. My, it, high production value on a low budget. That's exactly what I'm. Thank you. That's what I'm trying yes. to say, because uh, because it is a lot of bang for your buck, and those kills are great, um, and and they're doing a lot with actors that you've never heard of, uh, which could kind of go either way. As Some we, of them as, never as, acted again. No, yeah, yeah. A lot of them never acted again. <laughs> yeah. uh, but it's it's put together really well, and and. I could kind of do without some of the horn dog shit, but again, I get it's 1980. That was like heavy duty in at the time. It's fun. It's it's like whatever. That's like a pet peeve of mine, but it doesn't like detract from it that much. I'm just like, all right, one of these people getting killed. This is kind of like again. It was also like kind of when that stuff was first being established. Yeah. I mean, obviously Halloween already was a thing. It also reminds me of the times like when we were kids, when like you didn't have like a steady girlfriend or anything, and it was like kind of that weird thing where like. You do go to a party and maybe you happen to meet somebody there and it's like, oh, that's kind of exciting. You know what I mean? At that point in your I, life. Sure. I, I can't personally relate because I was too busy playing Halo at, at that point in my life. Well, but, I uh, found that I struck the balance, Sean, because yes. I was a horn dog as a child. <laughs> I was a halo dog or some <laughs> bullshit. Uh, no, listen, I totally get it. It's, it's also a like, Moa burger. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, it's a college movie on the, uh, at the end of the day, to some extent, too. Obviously, it's a little bit more window dressing in this film compared to some yes. others like Porky's is one. I always go back to or Animal House, of course. Yeah, but those are strictly titty comedy. Well, like, right. Yeah, comedy, yeah. This is like comedies, yeah. it's a horror movie. It takes place at college. Of course, because sure. it takes place at college, they're going to have sex. We're going to be fucking. Yeah. yeah uh, uh, but with, with all that said, I don't know, going off on a side tangent on that aspect of the film. Film. But uh, yeah, it's it's really good, and I don't, I don't know why. I, again, I said this earlier why I don't see that many people talk about this film. Uh, again, maybe it's just because it's not that easy to find if you don't know it exists. Uh, so definitely look this one up. Like Joe said, check it out on Amazon if you can, or if you can find a VHS or that Scorpio release. Like pick it up because this is a, this is good. Yeah. Uh, it's, again, it's not great, but out of all the horror movie Christmas movies that we've covered on this show. Like it's one of the better ones for sure. I think it deserves a, a spot on the shelf for sure. Oh, especially yeah. it's definitely you, on the shelf, especially if you're into this kind of thing. If you're a David Hess fan, if you're a horror movie fan, and if you're a Christmas movie. Yeah. Horror. I, and I mean, <laughs> this, this is almost like a movie slasher where, fan too. Really. I, I mean, if you're watching this show, you probably have seen a lot of these films, but I feel like if this was one that you came to early in your, your uh, travels in the horror genre especially the slasher subgenre 
it'd be kind of fun to visit this one with a lot without a lot of that prior knowledge of like Friday the 13th one and and a lot of the stuff like Black Christmas just like going in this blind I would love to hear someone's opinion because you don't have that prior knowledge of like oh well it's like I know we're joking about Mrs. Voorhees and even though that did come after but it's like almost impossible in 2022 not to make those comparisons no but the the, the fact of the matter is this came out first and yeah, like yeah, unless yeah. They, like you said unless they were sharing notes like it's purely <laughs> coincidence yeah. which is a good it's a good thing to to note that because I feel like a lot of people that are like oh they ripped off my yeah. idea they ripped off like this is a prime example of parallel thinking and uh, it's good too and it's good yeah. and like you can, I can watch Friday and this and be like oh they're both fine you know what yeah. I mean yeah so so yeah, we got so much good stuff coming on Patreon that's probably already all, all of it's out by now. Uh, by the time yeah. this drops, all of it's out. Uh, you got the Creep Show Two commentary track. What else we got? We got the Elves commentary track. Right. Yeah. We got the Blood Beat mini episode. Yeah. 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 Uh, there's just a lot of stuff coming in there's hot at the so end of the year in here. Hot. Again, I don't want to talk too much behind the scenes because you guys don't necessarily need to hear all that. And we'll, we'll probably talk about it on our live show. Yeah, you know where we're going to talk about that? Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. We're going to talk about the year end wrap up yeah. after New Year's. Yeah. I, I I guess the only thing I'll say just to finish that thought. So, so I'm not leaving you totally hanging. Yeah. Uh, is that just we're going to do things a little differently next year so that this hopefully doesn't happen. But uh, it's all to make the show better. Give you guys some more episodes have have the best quality uh stuff we can bring to you this don't don't forget this is our first year doing video i know that's crazy to think it's our about. first year doing video so there was a lot of bugs to work out but we are uh, we uh have examined them and of course every at the end of every year we look at uh uh, uh all the stuff we've done and how yes. we've done it and it's time to revamp how we uh do our production so so yeah uh so outside of that Live show, if you're watching this when it comes out, we usually do take a bit of a break in the beginning of the year. Yes. We take January off. Yes. Uh, we will see you in February, but keep keep an eye on the socials and on that Patreon. I'm sure if you're on Patreon, we'll have uh, some goodies for you, you know, kind of leading into the month of February to get you kind of like that little sneak peek as we get closer. But uh, other than that, I guess uh, have a happy fucking new year. So that's it. That's To All a Good Night from 1980, directed by David Hess. I'm Joel Escola. And I'm Sean O'Rourke. Thanks for visiting the dumpster. Happy Hanukkah, happy Kwanzaa, Merry Christmas, and a happy New Year. And they all lived happily ever after. Okay, Dobby. Now it is time for the sleeping. Okay. Fine. Ah. <sighs> Sweet dreams, my little Lipshin. Good night, Opa. Good night, Dobby. Oh. Oh. <laughs> 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 <laughs>